Chapter 41 Lu Xu was rather unsettled. Having eaten so many refresher fruits, why was he classified as Tier F? And at this time, Lu Xu realized something was wrong. When did he eat the refresher fruits? He then remembered that he only ate the refresher fruits in big amounts after having his blood drawn, which also meant that whatever indicated wasn't an accurate indication of his class now. As Lu Xu was weak since young, did that mean his foundation was not solid? But after eating the refresher fruit, it only increased his aptitude by a little compared to normal humans. Through the blood drawing, his aptitude rank is now at the rock bottom, only with two other guys. Having thought through this, Lu Xu calmed down. Since his actual aptitude was not accurately depicted and he was satisfied with his own training, what was there to worry about? Actually, this test was good for him. At least there would be a lower chance for him to be noticed by the black coats. After all, who knew what would the students of Daoyuan class be asked to do after training? At the moment, there seemed to be numerous metahumans outside of China as well. What if they were sent to war? Or sent to other countries for missions? If there really was a war, he would have to contribute to defending his country, didn't he? However, he thought that his life shouldn't be in the plans and control of other people. Despite this, he was still quite convinced by these black coats. If it was just like what he thought, the black coats wanted to gather everyone to get them trained up quickly. Lu Xu still felt that this was rather unreasonable. What if the training results in a student going crazy? How could they be accountable to the student's parents? Eventually, the black coats gathered all the metahumans to learn and train together. Seeing this document, Lu Li looked at those few in his class. When he saw Lu Xu was a tier F, he subconsciously felt a tinge of joy. Previously he wanted to cajole Lu Xu but was treated indifferently by him. Seeing Lu Xu's tear now, he almost couldn't hold his laughter. In the future, he didn't see Lu Xu as someone worth sucking up to anymore. Lu Li thought for a moment. Their class had such an organized classification, and other classes probably did the same thing. His tier B aptitude was probably one of the best amongst the entire Luo Chang's Daoyuan class. And the girl who transferred over from another school, Jiang Shui. She was also tier B, the aptitude of students in their class was rather high. Who knew what potential Li Qi had? Everyone in their school looked at Li Qi as if he was the leader and caused this entire flow of events. Lu Li didn't like this, which was why he didn't join Li Qi's clique. Now that he had an advantage in terms of aptitude, if he trained slightly harder in future, he might be able to replace Li Qi as their school's leader. In recent years, teenagers had become rather egocentric, willing to do whatever it took to surpass everyone else. They would think that they were competent and capable of accomplishing whatever they heard from the adults. Everyone says that connections are the most important in the world. But once they enter society, they'll realize that connections aren't formed merely by simple chats and conversations. To be a student leader, even more so for a metahuman student leader. This sort of ambition only existed in teenagers who were egocentric and self-centered. Thinking of all this, Luli decided he should carry it out. He interacted with his close friends and asked who was in the same class as Li Qi. Soon, he got the answer that he wanted, Li Qi was tier F, just like Lu Xu. He also heard that Li Qi was quiet and aloof now, sitting in a corner of his class. It was probably because it was hard to accept in such a short time, that he had the lowest aptitude. Lu Li was gleeful upon hearing this news. However, at the next moment, a classmate handed him a piece of rather shocking news, the class next to you, class 3. There's a girl who's tier A, it seems like she's the sole tier A in the entire city of Luo Chang. Lu Li was stunned. The sole tier A student. This was already no secret. Within Li Qi's big group, there were already people congratulating this girl, who was called Chao Qingzi. Lu Xu was not surprised that this girl was tier A, in his opinion if someone deserved to be tier A, it had to be this girl. 
The other party awakened a long time ago and her ability was definitely higher than Class E. It was natural that she had improved since then. Lu Xu was curious. What changes will training bring about for people like her who had already awakened their abilities? Will it have no effect, or will further training result in even greater power? Lu Xu felt inclined to believe it was the latter. The greatest takeaway Lu Xu felt he had gotten from the night was that he managed to get into another chat group, the one created by Shi Fei. Just by looking at the group, he was tempted to add them as friends. Apparently, the maximum number of friends was 5,000. He was still early. Lu Xu turned around and looked at Jiang Shuyi. This teenager was also tier B, at this moment, by his side was a boy, looking extremely nervous, informing him that he had sent him a friend request, and wanting his approval. Jiang Shuyi didn't even look at him, and his cold, harsh hostility chased the other student away. Lu Xu felt that this Jiang Shuyi wasn't the type to be cold and arrogant. He was still rather warm and friendly this afternoon. It was probably because he was mistaken to be a girl, causing him to be rather unhappy. Jiang Shuyi's facial features were rather unrivaled. Lu Xu estimated that only Lu Xiaoyu might be able to compare with him in future. However, this was none of his business. Just as Lu Xu was about to think about other things, Jiang Shuyi suddenly turned around and spoke to him, Teacher Shifei is right. Even with a poor aptitude, anyone can accomplish anything for himself with sufficient determination and grit. Lu Xu thought for a moment, was this comforting him? Jiang Shuyi was definitely saying this only because he saw his aptitude. Lu Xu smiled, you're right. Was this a warm teenager with a cold expression? No one knew what his personality was like. Some people might seem decent, but were actually jokers and clowns. These things couldn't be determined just by appearance alone. Lu Xu suddenly thought of a question. If the Daoyuan class had anything to do with blood drawing again, he had to avoid it no matter what. Else his quick improvement from tier F might be seen as suspicious and he might be brought away for investigation. Mm, Jiang Shui didn't say anything else. Chapter 42 The internet buzz on the implementation of Daoyuan class was massive. Although effective secrecy work was in place and people were bounded by contracts, paper will never be able to contain fire. Many believed that it signified a beginning, the beginning where metahumans would take center stage in history. Perhaps, our descendants would refer to this as the beginning of the era of metahumans? In the past, it was felt that even if metahumans did exist, it would be unthinkable to gather them together and conduct classes with them. Lu Xu believed that within Daoyuan class, the lack of compliance with the Black Coat's systematic training methods would only leave them with a lower probability of becoming a metahuman. Nonetheless, not everyone was promised an awakening. Besides, not everyone could be sufficiently stimulated. From the look of this situation, the Black Coats had seriously placed a high importance on the development of metahumans as if they were resources. Sunset Industries in the current era had already received a blow from the rise in internet usage. 5% of the shops in Guangzhou were forced to shut down where the rise of the internet had turned some businesses obsolete. And at this moment, metahumans had appeared out of the blue in numbers approaching the millions. This made one pondered whether the birth of metahumans would add on to adversely affect the current social and industrial order. Inevitably, such thoughts would definitely come to one's mind. In fact, the move to establish the Daoyuan class might be one too big. With four cities and 283 prefectures within the country, who knew how many Daoyuan classes were there? Not including the provinces, the students there were all transferred over to the prefectural areas for classes. Lu Xu suddenly realized that for every Daoyuan class there were, a member of the Black Coat was selected to be the form teacher for that class. That being said, the size of the Black Coat organization must be huge. Analyzing it further, it seemed logical if the government had preemptive knowledge of what was about to happen. Producing a grand plan which developed training methods for enhancing the students' abilities, and recruiting tens of thousands of men from the military definitely seemed plausible if they had prior knowledge.
of the MetaHuman incident. It seems like the form teachers selected from the organization had similar thought processes and discipline. Even if there were problematic individuals, the probability of problems arising would certainly be much smaller than from their own group of middle school students. Once the black coat structure had taken shape, expanding their organization seemed like one of the best plans there was. From the looks of it, before society was able to produce a genius metahuman with class B or higher ability, the government would already have everything under its control. Lu Xu sighed as he thought of how it was definitely not a good idea to underestimate the power of a country's calculations. On the second day of school, students were released back to their original classes to attend cultural lessons. When asked about what the Daoyuan class had taught them, those students chose to remain quiet. They realized the severity and consequences if they were to leak any information since they had already signed an agreement with them. Still, Lu Xu heard whispers in class, I heard that Lu Xu's aptitude is the best from the rear. Other students mostly had tiers CDE and even Lu Li was tier B while Lu Xu was only tier F, and from the rumors, there were only 10 plus tier F students amongst all the Daoyuan classes. I heard that aptitude does not represent what someone can achieve in the future, but a tier F aptitude is really too low. He definitely barely made the cut for the class. <laughs> So what if he had barely made the cut? In a few days, he would probably be back here, how awkward would that be? The thought of them not even qualifying for the Daoyuan class had never even crossed their mind. In the end, they had started to comment and discuss the other's aptitude for abilities. Since it was Lu Xu's personal problem, he was clear as to what actually was the case. Although he was uncertain what his actual aptitude was, he knew that he was definitely not tier F. As such, Lu Xu had already braced himself and did not take their discussions to heart. And so he sent a message to the class group chat. Rather be the tail of a phoenix than the head of a chicken. Hi, chicken heads. After seeing this message, confusion struck his classmates. What the hell is a chicken head? Only then did everyone realize that even if Lu Xu were to be placed last in the Daoyuan class, he would still always be the same Lu Xu he was before enrolling in the class. From Just this chat group of his had contributed 1,000 plus distress points to Lu Xu. Including the distress points from before, Lu Xu could now exchange them for three more celestial fruits. The first and second stars had both been lit up by one celestial fruit. Lighting up the third star required one whole celestial fruit. Lighting up the fourth star required two celestial fruits. And lighting up the fifth star required four celestial fruits. He had consumed two celestial fruits and trained for a full eight-hour period, in order to achieve the overall effects of four celestial fruits. So currently, what was required to light up the sixth star? Did it require eight celestial fruits? Believing it to be so, Lu Xu calculated that he needed at least half a month to light up all the seven stars in the first nebula. Lu Xu felt that his progress was rather slow. Little did he know, metahumans who wanted to obtain the strength of eight grown adults like him had to put in a large amount of time and effort, and their endeavors couldn't simply be measured just by fruits. If anyone picked a fight with Lu Xu currently, he was sure that his punch could easily reach up to a few thousand pounds. Although uncertain of the specific speeds he could achieve, he felt that his senses and speed had already far surpassed the normal human limits. Were the strength-type metahumans able to awaken as much strength as he had within him? Since Li Qi did not seem very powerful at all, Lu Xu was curious whether all strength-type metahumans at Class F were only as good as Li Qi. If so, did that mean that ascending from Class F would be a stroll in a park for Lu Xu? Lu Xu felt that the little star lullaby was definitely unusual, but how special it was exactly had to depend on the other metahumans. Still, something was amiss. Did they not sign the contract of secrecy? How did the students find out about his aptitude? Someone must have snitched. But of course, a mere contract would be unable to keep the confidentiality of the Daoyuan class activities. It was wise that the black coats had not taught them the way activate their abilities, or else this information would have already been leaked out to the streets by now. 
If the issue of maintaining the secrecy of the class activities was not managed properly, wouldn't it continue to spread? Students were still in heated debate, Luli is tier B, his power in the future could be limitless. Please look out for us in the future. Li Qingyu is not bad too, being C-class, he is considered above average, Lu Li replied humbly although he was secretly happy inside. As he turned around to comfort Ling Qi, Ling Qi do not be disheartened, the form teacher had already said that cultivating your abilities does not depend on your aptitude for abilities. Persevere on and it will soon be your time to shine. Precious gold can never be buried anywhere it goes. Seated afar somewhere, Lu Xu heard those hypocritical comments. If Lu Li did not think much of the aptitude, why did he value his own so much? <laughs> At least you three have a better aptitude compared to Lu Xu. Hearing that comment, a group of students dissolved into laughter. How did bullying in schools come about? It was probably due to the isolation of an individual by a group. Releasing the inner demons from their hearts, youths had no scruples to make fun of others. Lu Xu, however, felt that his aptitude could be of tire. At that instance, Chi Fei suddenly appeared at the class doorway, student Li Qingyu, please step outside. Chapter 43 No one knew when the F9 class form teacher, Chi Fei, had appeared and why he was looking for Li Qingyu. Confused, Li Qingyu walked out. When he returned a short ten minutes later, his eyes were swollen and red. The students all felt something was strange and approached him but were shocked. Apparently, he had violated the confidentiality regulations of the Daoyuan class and was expelled. Shi Fei had come to inform him that he no longer had to attend the Daoyuan class and even confiscated his night class pass. To a high school student who yearned to awaken, this was a nightmare. Lu Xu was wondering if Li Qingyu was the one who leaked about his aptitude. The class was initially filled with chatter and laughter but after witnessing a student with tier C aptitude expelled just like that, the class was filled with fear and anxiety. Just like any other confidentiality forms, no one took them that seriously. Li Qingyu also felt that when Shi Fei asked everyone to sign the confidentiality regulations, it did not feel that formal. Furthermore, Teenagers generally had a loose tongue and would casually talk about what happened in the Daoyuan class to the rest of their classes. He also never expected the consequences to be as serious as expulsion. What could he do? He was already so close to being part of that magical world but had fallen back down and it must have felt frustrating. As to how strict the regulations were, Lu Xu was not surprised and he thought that at least the punishment would not be as extreme as facing the military court, right? But it was hard to be sure. Awakening was a not a small matter and leaking about aptitudes seemed rather trivial. Could he have leaked about training exercises? Lu Xu was underestimating the matter and leaking aptitudes may not be a trivial matter. What if someone out there was targeting this group of metahuman reserves and decided to capture those of tier aptitude? Wouldn't that be bad? At the same time, the classes had started receiving rumors about the news that someone had been expelled from the Daoyuan class. Within the next few hours in the afternoon, over 40 individuals were expelled because of breaching the confidentiality regulations and never to be enrolled again. This was a warning to the rest and the method was to be stern. The students had not been through regimental training and did not have a particularly strict discipline, so this method of expelling a bunch of students was to let the rest realize what they were dealing with. In just one city, so many were expelled. So what about the whole country? Someone suddenly exclaimed, someone from class 2 awakened the moment he was expelled and was taken away by the class form teacher by force. Lu Xu frowned and thought, again. The Black Coat's way of dealing with methods, capture. It was unknown where the student was brought but looking at Liang Che, who seemed totally fine, it must not have been that bad. Being expelled was also a form of stimulation, stimulation for students to generate large amounts of emotions and psychological fluctuations. And every class teacher had already been prepared for the case of awakening and to take them away immediately. Lu Xu suddenly thought that these black coats were really amazing and their plans were always flawless. 
Even though Lu Xu was technically one of their victims, no one had found out he had already awakened and furthermore, he was improving rapidly. It should be expected that after this expulsion incident, no one else would dare to leak information and the scariest part of it was that no one knew how the form teachers managed to accurately pick out who had breached the regulations. It was a strange feeling as though they knew everything. Lu Xu felt that the mysterious feeling surrounding the black coats was intentional and the next time he talked to Lu Xiaoyu, he should leave his phone a distance away. Besides that, there wasn't anything else of concern. All he did on his phone was to disturb some classmates to earn distress points and there should not be anything wrong with it. All right, it was wrong but at least it wasn't something the black coats would bother themselves with. His desky Jiang Shui looked at Lu Xu, are you not angry with what they said about you? Lu Xu thought and replied, there's nothing to be mad about. Jiang Shui acknowledged his reply. Lu Xu suddenly asked, did someone write you a love letter? Jiang Shui rolled his eyes and nodded. Lu Xu added on, guys are not counted from girls, right? From Jiang Shui's distress, plus 261. <laughs> Lu Xu continued looking through his phone records. He felt that having Yi Lingling as a desky was still better as there was no need to feel guilty when earning distress points from her. Since yesterday, there were classmates telling Jiang Shui that his desky was a little special and that his main characteristic was his toxic mouth. At that moment, Lu Xu finally found Li Qingyu's contact and sent a message. Did you get expelled because of leaking information about the aptitudes? Thinking about it, Li Qingyu was the only one from his original sophomore class 3 who was expelled and the rest were still in F9 class. And since the other Daoyuan classes could not have known their aptitudes, it must have been Li Qingyu. Since Li Qingyu had leaked and joked about Lu Xu's aptitude, earning distress points from him definitely felt deserved. Lu Xu was not that generous. He wasn't that angry as he knew his own aptitude. Sending a few messages to annoy him was considered quite generous and chat groups were his main sources of distress points. From Li Qingyu's distress, Plus 131, Li Qingyu did not reply but distress points were definitely repaid. He must have seen the message and decided to ignore Lu Xu. Lu Xu did not care and continued messaging. <laughs> From Li Qingyu's distress, plus 411. Li Qingyu was so mad that he was exploding with rage to the point of almost awakening but did not. He must have been in the wrong which explained why he did not dare to reply Lu Xu's question. But that, <laughs> and that exclamation mark left a distasteful feeling within him. But Lu Xu also knew his limits. Firstly, he should not be so mean to his classmate who was already upset. Secondly, if he awakened because of this, Lu Xu would not be able to torture him anymore. Lu Xu looked at the 3,800 distress points he had and thought about trying the lottery again later at night. He wondered if something new could be won now that the refresher fruit was gone. Chapter 44 Once school was over, Lu Li wanted to comfort Li Qingyu with a meal but was rejected. Anyone that had gone through what Li Qingyu did probably wouldn't have an appetite for anything. Too many people had already been affected by metahuman situation. The flaws in everyone's personality were magnified as of now and according to rumors, Li Qi from sophomore class 7 had not spoken for a day as well. Maintaining his spirits, Lu Xu went to the market to purchase eggs after school. He had to restock on his supply of eggs so that he could carry on with his business tomorrow. After some further contemplation, he decided to also buy a tomato, a cucumber and $5 worth of meat. Actually, he grew tomatoes in his backyard. However, since it was winter, and his DIY plastic greenhouse was not professional, his tomatoes were unripe and inedible. Lu Xu felt that he should tidy up his greenhouse tonight. After all, homegrown produce was cheaper. Even though Lu Xu called it a greenhouse, it was more like a random arrangement of plastics. He planned to cook fried tomato egg and stir-fried cucumber with meat for Lu Xiaoyu tonight. Considering the fact that Lu Xiaoyu ate eggs every day, she was often lacking meat in her meals. 
Fearing the lack of nutrition in her meals, Lu Xu often made her meat dishes two to three times a week. When she was younger, Lu Xiaoyu would often snatch up all the meat for herself. In these two years, she had grown more mature and always took the initiative to leave two-thirds of the meat dishes for Lu Xu, her reason being that Lu Xu was too weak and needed more nutrition for his body. Days like this were nourishing for them. Whenever he observed Lu Xiaoyu eating the meals he cooked, Lu Xu would always feel some sort of weird feeling of satisfaction. Even being as frail and sickly as he was, Lu Xu was proud that he had the ability to provide for another person. Lu Xu was not extremely talented in the field of cooking, but he was able to manage in producing decent dishes. The only downside was that his dishes lacked in their aesthetic appeal. Lu Xiaoyu's favorite was the fried tomato egg cooked by Lu Xu, and she never held back whenever it was cooked. With her spoon, she scooped soup and the eggs onto her rice, mixing them all together and eating the whole lot of it as such. At one go, Lu Xiaoyu could finish two bowls of rice. Hence, her eyes sparkled when she noticed that Lu Xu had meat and tomatoes in the plastic bag. Lu Xu, Lu Xu, would you be making fried tomato egg tonight? As Lu Xiaoyu asked the obvious to obtain her much-desired confirmation. That is correct, Lu Xu replied as he placed the ingredients in the kitchen. On his way to wash his hand, he ordered, go and cook the rice. Use the rice that's more expensive from the supermarket. Many might not understand how meticulous poorer kids had lived. Even the rice they ate had two types, one cheaper and the other pricier, which was only enjoyed occasionally. Had Lu Xu told this to his classmates, they would be in shock. Did not all types of rice cost the same? Lu Xu then peeled the garlic, cracked three eggs and started beating them. Upon placing the garlic in the boiling oil, aroma had wafted out from the wok. The rice was cooked at the perfect timing just as he was done with his dishes. After scooping out the rice and tabling the dishes, Lu Xiaoyu started chowing down on her meal. After the meal, Lu Xu shouted for Lu Xiaoyu's help in the yard, Hey, our tomatoes are not ripe. There must be a problem with the greenhouse. The two of them started searching around the greenhouse as he held onto his handphone while using its torchlight feature. Finally, they managed to find two holes at the base of the greenhouse which enabled cold wind to penetrate into the greenhouse. Lu Xu, when the tomatoes are ripe, would you cook tomato eggs again, as Lu Xiaoyu looked up at him and asked. I will, I will, Lu Xu laughed. This request from her would definitely be remembered by Lu Xu. But the homemade greenhouse had too many problems, who knew when the tomatoes would ripen. Nested on the couch with her full belly, Lu Xiaoyu was watching the television while Lu Xu was beside her studying his system, scanning through the records to see who had a grudge against him. <laughs> there were indeed many. Just from today, his distress points income came up to be 3,000 plus. In addition, there was still existing resentment against him that continued to contribute to his distress points, plus one plus one. As such, distress point collection for Lu Xu had reached close to 4,000. Thinking to himself, since eight celestial fruits were needed to light up the sixth star, he would be unable to progress even if he trained for the whole night. On the other hand, he was especially curious as to what the lottery prizes were since the system had removed the refresher fruit from the lottery. To the lottery. After some rough calculation, he would only have to take four days to obtain the eight celestial fruits needed to light up the sixth star. Even if he had underestimated the number of fruits, the difference would not have been too much. At that moment, the temptation of the lottery was too great. Clicking on the lottery button, the wheel started spinning again. The lottery wheel seemed like a mess when it was spinning and it only revealed what it was pointing to after it had stopped. Thank you for participating, these words were like knives carving into Lu Xu's flesh. It felt as though his heart was hung up every time he participated in the lottery. The wheel finally stopped and the arrow was pointing to a slot that suddenly lighted up as if the clouds were being separated by invisible hands. This time, the result was not, thank you for participating. <laughs> it actually wasn't, thank you for participating. Staring intently, Lu Xu did not know how to react to the prize. 
ZZZ, half a beat passed and Lu Xu inhaled a cold breath, you can't be serious? You cannot be serious. That was a box of stinky tofu which even had a pair of bamboo chopsticks attached to it. Why thank you mischief system, even preparing chopsticks for me, you're really the best. Lu Xu wanted to ask, why couldn't he absorb his own distress? Hmm. Why? To think he used to be afraid of the appearance of, thank you for participating. Lu Xu had felt that this system was lacking in some logical boundaries, but even stinky tofus were appearing now. What could be next, barbecued chicken wings? Hey, buddy, you're a system for a metahuman, not a system for a roadside store. Hey. Lu Xu suddenly thought of it, could it be, that the stinky tofu was not something ordinary? Was it not rumored that the game, Fantasy Westward Journey, had food that gave a boost to players' stats? Although Lu Xu could not afford the game, he had heard discussions about it from his classmates. Could this stinky tofu contain similar miraculous properties? Raising his eyebrows, Lu Xu thought that if such was actually the case, would he be able to accept this situation? Let's retrieve it for a taste. Only after tasting it would he then know the truth. Upon retrieving the box of stinky tofu from the system. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 11. He saw that Lu Xiaoyu, who was sharing the same couch with him, turned to him with an expressionless face, Lu Xu, did you crap your pants? Instantly, Lu Xu's face darkened, go screw yourself. Can't you think straight for once, the difference in smell was too great okay? However, even though this stinky tofu was indeed pungent, it smelled, authentic. Chapter 45 Lu Xiaoyu turned around and saw a box of stinky tofu in Lu Xu's hand, stinky tofu? How did you get a box of stinky tofu? Lu Xu passed her a pair of bamboo chopsticks, try it. Finishing what he said, he stuffed a piece into his mouth and waited for a change in his energy level. A minute passed. Lu Xu almost spat the stinky tofu out onto the ground. There wasn't even a single change, this was just an ordinary plate of stinky tofu. Lu Xu identified that it was just an ordinary stinky tofu. This mischief system really made him feel like crying. Lu Xiaoyu, who was seated beside Lu Xu, was immensely enjoying the previously scorned stinky tofu. With her mouth full, she said, So Lu Xu, your awakened ability is, to make food appear? Based on Lu Xiaoyu's view, it was fruits previously and it was now stinky tofu, all of them having relations with food. Other metahumans were able to conjure lightning, fire, and tornadoes with a wave of their hands, how cool was that? But for Lu Xu, a wave of his hand had produced a box of stinky tofu. Well, it actually didn't seem that bad. At least for a glutton like Lu Xiaoyu, it was decent. Though pungent, it was actually quite fragrant when eaten. Lu Xiaoyu felt that she had never had such good stinky tofu in her life. Darkly colored, the stinky tofu had sprinkles of shallots, parsley, and a little bit of chili oil on it. Upon consuming it, a special flavor would burst apart within one's mouth and they would hardly be able to stop eating it. Lu Xu, with a face darker than ever, did not feel like speaking. He then heard Lu Xiaoyu say, Lu Xu, a portion of Chinese crepe please. <laughs> Lu Xu was on the verge of exploding and she was ordering food from him? Go ahead and eat, just enjoy you our stinky tofu. Controlling his anger, Lu Xu decided to re-roll the lottery. And again. Another box of stinky tofu. Hiss. Lu Xu inhaled another deep cold breath and he could hardly believe that in the three times that he had spun the lottery, a box of stinky tofu was rewarded for all three times, storing itself in the system's inventory. Feeling a pinch in his heart, Lu Xu thought whether that could be the only thing the lottery had to offer? This can't be right, this can't be right, if there were only stinky tofu, how could it still be considered a lottery? Maybe when the refresher fruit had hit its limit, the stinky tofu had replaced the dreaded, thank you for participating. And it was up to probability to see what he could grasp from the system. If that was the case, other than the stinky tofu, 
there was currently a surreal prize to be won which had a similar probability of being drawn as the refresher fruit. And if it were to be exactly as he had imagined, it was totally acceptable for Stinky Tofu to replace the words, Thank you for participating. Lu Xu poured all of his distress points in one go into the lottery in order to verify his thoughts, anticipating what he could draw. Subsequently, Lu Xu's inventory bag had over 20 boxes of stinky tofu. His inventory still had a total of 29 boxes of stinky tofu excluding the portion Lu Xiaoyu was eating. That being said, Lu Xu did not manage to draw anything other than stinky tofu. <laughs> it's game over now right? Lu Xu, full of despair, climbed up to the roof and sat there all alone for 20 minutes. Pondering over and over for those 20 minutes, he sat there thinking, how could his metahuman journey be so tough? There were currently two possible scenarios for him. The first one was that the mischief system could only produce stinky tofu from now on and would perhaps only be changed when he hits the limit for it as well. The second one was, as Lu Xu had expected, having stinky tofu replace, thank you for participating. The main issue was the probability of the rewards, what could be so valuable that even 30 draws were not enough for it to make its appearance. If only the item could be that valuable, and Lu Xu felt that it was just his wishful thinking. Or could it be a new ability? But another issue he had was what could he do with all these stinky tofu? There were already 29 portions and counting. He can't possibly make Lu Xiaoyu eat stinky tofus every day, right? It was so much better to obtain cash. Oh wait, cash? Lu Xu realized one fact about himself, that he was poor as heck. Although his business could barely provide for him and Lu Xiaoyu, there was still cost required for the eggs, but he was very satisfied to earn just about $1,500 per month. Stinky Tofu, on the other hand, was different. By selling one portion for $5, he could earn the entire $5 due to the lack of a cost price for the tofus. For a teenager as poor as Lu Xu, such an idea to riches started the ball rolling in his mind. If he could earn 3,000 distress points a day to spin the lottery, he would be able to obtain 30 portions of Stinky Tofu. After Lu Xiaoyu had consumed some of it, he would still have 28 or 29 more portions. This way, he would be able to make 100 plus dollars a day and in a month, he could earn about 3,000 to 4,000 dollars. This was more than double of what he was currently making. Deemed to be petty cash to some, it was a seemingly large sum to both Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu. How much more could be achieved with those 30 hundred to 40 hundred extra dollars? Gradually, he could start to afford Lu Xiaoyu's school fees. More meat and milk for Lu Xiaoyu's nourishment. Increased tidbits for Lu Xiaoyu. Movies with Lu Xiaoyu. And even a change in spring clothing for Lu Xiaoyu was viable. Little girls definitely had innate desires to doll up but Lu Xiaoyu was matured enough to hide those feelings. As such, she had never once complained about wearing worn clothes. However, it was clear to Lu Xiaoyu that buying clothes was by no means a small purchase. Thus, she only limited her request to simple $5 Hawthorne candies or $2 sweet potatoes. Another viable option was to save up and to bring Lu Xiaoyu on a trip. Lu Xiaoyu had witnessed the beauty of the Chakayan Lake when it was being advertised once on television and became hooked on it. She was unable to forget her desires to see it with her own eyes even though Lu Xu told her. That many were disappointed by the Chakayan Lake when they saw it firsthand. Well, that would have to wait till we have the money, as Lu Xu made a silent promise in his heart. Lu Xu thought that his enjoyment would have to come second to hers. He had a duty to fulfill since he was the one who made this little girl leave the orphanage. It would be too late if she were to start schooling at the age of 16. Her classmates would be discussing the places they had been to while Lu Xiaoyu had not been to anywhere before. It was sorrowful just thinking about such a scene. Lu Xu suddenly felt that the stinky tofu prizes were a blessing as converting the refresher fruit to cash was rather inconvenient. If he were to be tracked down, everything would be over for him. Lu Xu understood the concept of the idiom which explained that the downfall of a wealthy man was due to the greed of others. 
With Lu Xu selling stinky tofus, it was currently his best bet at earning money. Thinking of all the stuff he had to accomplish, Lu Xu felt a wave of motivation to rake in the distress points. Well, for a metahuman like him, this special method to earn money was probably way too humble a thought. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens